Daru had the best quote, I think, so far when he said she may be 3D, but her soul is 2D. Yeah, that was really good. Oh my god, so good. Was, I'm pretty sure that's an insult. Yeah. And I wrote that after and I'm getting some major, major Chris vibes. Excuse me? <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to another arc of my first anime. This week, this month, this two months, perhaps, we will be <laughs> discussing Stein's Gate, uh, adapted by Juki Hanada from the 5BP and Nitro Plus visual novel of the same name from 2009. I am Chris Semicolon Bailey. I'm Salvador, also known as Monkey Semicolon. <laughs> And I'm the time traveler known as Anthony Vaught. <laughs> <laughs> so if uh, you are rejoining us, welcome back. If this is your first time, the concept here is that we are uh, three different levels of anime expertise, with Anthony being the newest and me and Monkey both being, let's say, different kinds of experts. We've done a handful of stuff before this. And this was Anthony's pick, and actually, this is a bit of a first for me as well, considering this is the first anime I have ever watched adapted from a visual novel. Oh my gosh, I'm going to say the same thing. I think this is my first one with a visual novel. Hey guys, me too. This is my first ever visual uh, novel adaptation. Do you know what visual novel is? Nope. Uh, so Remember the game Murder by Numbers? Yes. That might be pretty close to a visual novel. It's a lot of just like clicking and reading through text with very light gameplay elements. Huh. Like like the Ace Attorney games are kind of visual novels, if you know what those are. I am aware. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 They're, they're computer books with pictures, basically. Yep. I mean, so, okay. So it's like a really big thing in Japan, but basically, yes, it's like a story and it's, it's basically you pick your own adventure where you pick out which, which dialogue you want to go with and then... The whole point is for you to hook up with the girl at the very end, depending mm-hmm. on what choices you make. And that is why I've never watched an anime of a visual novel, because I thought I was, like, misconstruing here, but Monkey just confirmed it for me for a little bit. For whatever reason, I think visual novels are very horny. Although I will say, um, I talked about 13 Sentinels previously. That's kind of a visual novel. Despite my aversion to visual novels, I do really like the Danganronpa series and the Zero Escape series. Both of those are fantastic. And I'd say you have very little of that horniness, more or less. I think that's it for what I have on background for me. How about you guys? I just know that, like, I did, I do not grow up um, playing any visual novels. Actually, I still haven't played any visual novels. But I'm just going to say there was a time when I was younger when I would go to Newgrounds and play the fucking, like, sex game and trying to get sex in the very end. I don't know if you guys played that, but that was my thing when I was younger. <laughs> I've, uh, I've dabbled. They're too grindy, man. <laughs> too grindy. <laughs> yeah, man. Fuck I, I, do, I do get bored, but I get, uh, yeah, I remember being very, very bored half the time. I, I think the whole point is for you to try to speed run it. Trying to see which one is the which one's the answers that I would need to, to get to the sort of point. I played for fourteen hours so I could picture of the <laughs> see a picture of the poorly drawn girl naked. <laughs> but yeah, that, I mean that's like my experience with visual novels, and that's not visual novels. That's just a point and click game trying to get to the very end. Just a quick Google search, like visual novel game or visual novel. I I don't know any of these. Yeah, uh, the most famous one that for Science Gate. No, yeah, Science Gate is a visual novel. But the two famous ones that I can think of is uh, How to Fool Boyfriend, which is a where you try to get, uh, get with pigeons. Your pigeons are cute anime boys. It's actually pretty <laughs> cool. But you, Have you played it, Owens? Um, I've, I, don't, I haven't personally played it, but I've seen several people over the years play bits and pieces. Like, it actually gets kind of fucking wild. Yeah. What's the other one? You know, you, you know the other one I'm talking about, right? Yep. Doki and I was Doki. actually going to... I yeah, Fucking miss me with that Doki Doki stuff. Please... If you tweet at me about Doki Doki Literature Club, I am blocking you. I do not care. It seems like garbage. I am 0% interested. I tried playing it. Was so bored out of my mind. It does have a 10 out of 10 on Steam. 
Yeah, of course it does, because, oh, my precious computer waifus. <laughs> yeah, but Doki Doki is a very interesting one where it's like, oh, these are very, like, simple goals. And then the more you get into you, the more messed up they are. Are we ready to get into Stein's Gate? Yep. All right. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk on voice actors. Luckily, it's a split up like half and half. So I'm going to do half an episode one and half an episode two. Um, I just took I know almost nothing about this show. So I just took this from a list of who the main characters supposedly are. If there are people that are supposed to be in here and are not or are not supposed to be in here, but are. I apologize either way, but too bad. Uh, So let's run it down with episode one. We've got our main character, Rintaro Okabe, in the Japanese. He is Mamoru Miyano. He is a singer, but he is also Yagami Light from Death Note. He is Death the Kid from Black Clover, Fairy Tale. Soul Leader. Soul Leader. Soul Leader. <laughs> Thank you. He is Ling Yao from Brotherhood. Uh, and he's Crowlo. Oh, shit. Actually, he's a lot of people. Hold up. <laughs> he's Crowlo from um, Hunter Hunter. Oh. He is... Everyone's favorite Jean-Jacques Leroy from Yuri on Ice. Yes, sir. He is Ert- DJ Ertagun from Carol and Tuesday. He is a what? Oh, Masaomi Kita from Dorarara, which I haven't seen, but that's on my list. Um, he is Riku from Kingdom Hearts. He is Flynn Shifo from Tales of Vesperia, one of the best JRPGs I've ever made. Yuri Lowell is a breath of fresh air as a protagonist uh he's ignis from final fantasy 15 dude yuri just fucking kills people he doesn't care um and like he that. is ryuji from persona 5 that dude's getting work it sounds like it oh are we all doing uh sub yeah uh, i am sub on this one i actually couldn't find a dub oh, okay are you where are you guys watching it i decided to watch on crunch Crunchy. yeah yes the quality is way better i try i watched the first two episodes on hulu it looks real dirty also, there's a Funimation uh, watermark in the bottom corner the entire time. Uh, English. J. Michael Tatum is Isaac Dean in Bacano. That guy rules. Scar in Brotherhood. Enaru in One Piece. Lita in My Hero Academia. And Mickey in Yuri on Ice, who's the creepy brother guy. Uh, then we've got Kurisu Makise. Uh, she is Asami Imai in the Japanese, who didn't have any roles that stuck out to me. I think she might have been a singer, too. If she was, I did not write that down. In the English, she is Trina Nishimura, who is Lan Fan in Brotherhood, uh, Mikasa in Attack on Titan, and Kyokujiro in My Hero Academia. Uh, then we have Mayuri Shina in the Japanese, Kana Hanazawa. She is, who the hell is that? Who is Ani Sonohara? Oh, from Anri Sonohara, also from Dorarara. Okay. And uh, Marie from Persona 4 Golden. In the English, actually kind of a weird one that I'm like, oh, I know this person, uh, is Ashley Birch. Sounds familiar. If you know video games, you probably know who Ashley Birch is, Out, even outside of voice acting. Um, her bigger roles, she would be Tiny Tina from Borderlands, unfortunately. Oh, my gosh. that It's that lady. Yeah, she's Chloe Price in Life is Strange. That game's fucking amazing. Everyone play it. She's Milliam Orion in Trails of Cold Steel. She's Aloy in oh, yeah? the cool game that I don't, didn't play. Ugh, God, what is that game called? Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, she is Viper in Valorant, which is interesting. <laughs> Big wow, fan, big really? fan of Viper. Uh, she is Mel in Last of Us Part 2 and Sasha Blouse in Attack on Titan. Oh, wow. She's my favorite character in Attack on Titan. Hell I think she's yeah. a potato girl. We got John Titor, Titor, uh, who is Hiroshi Shuchida in the Japanese. Nothing that stuck out to me. And Patrick Seitz in the English, who is Zaraki Kenpachi from Bleach, as, long as, as well as Ishin Kurosaki, Frankie from One Piece, Sloth from Brotherhood, Gamagori, what is Gamagori from? Gamagori's from Kill a Kill. Um, he's Endeavor in My Hero Academia. He's Desmond in uh, Carol and Tuesday. He is JP from Redline. And he is the voice of a Sim in The Sims 4, <laughs> which I thought was really funny. <laughs> and uh, our final character, Yugo, Mr. Braun Tenoji. He's Masaki Terasoma in the Japanese, who 
or again, had no roles that stuck out to me. And in the English, he is Christopher Sabat, who is Vegeta, Piccolo, and Yamcha from Dragon Ball Z. Wow. <laughs> Kuwabara, which actually, now that I think about it, makes sense, because they all had that same voice like this. I'm Vegeta. I'm Piccolo. He's Kuwabara? <laughs> yeah, he is Kuwabara from Yu Yu Show. He is Zoro from One Piece. He is Armstrong from Brotherhood. He is Monkey's favorite character, Trevor Exist, Christoph Giacometti from... <laughs> Yuri on Ice, and he is All Might in, everyone say it with me, My Hero Academia. Because, <laughs> <laughs> goddamn, every English voice actor is in My Hero Academia. That's what we got for episode one. We'll revisit this on episode two. We jump into, we know to be Okabe, narrating some philosophical shit about how universes have a beginning but no end and stars or whatever he says some stuff like the people with wisdom are the real fools and it's god's final warning or whatever and we see a guy and a girl on a roof and we fade to white before going to our time machine conference what do you guys think about the animation style like kind of the artsy but real grayish grayscale I was so bored with this animation style. Everything is just dark for no fucking reason. Uh, I'm, a, I'm kind of a fan. I'm so tired of all this gloom shit. Like, I just want something po- to pop out. But, it, like, this whole show is, like, gloomy. See, I don't get gloom. I, I do get, like, a little bit of, like, unsettling, which I appreciate. Um, like, something feels off for sure. Yeah. Um, I do kind of also feel like the... Granted, this is from, I think, 2011. I feel like the animation is kind of low budget. We meet Mayuri, right? Yeah, we have the whole Time Machine conference, and, you know, he yells at the guy, like, you're just copying uh, John Titor, um, which, if you guys aren't aware, it was a real guy. Every, pretty much everything they say about him is true in this show. We meet Mayuri before the conference. No, be- before the conference, though, something interesting happens. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I thought this all happened at once. Or did it happen after? Hmm. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Strap in for eight episodes of those jokes. <laughs> but um, what's it called? He, I think he goes to the conference room or something like that, and he's like, "Wow, this is a really low co- turnout because of the fucking organization." And I'm just like, "What the organization is about, whatever." Mm-hmm. And then he goes up to the roof, and then Maui, my Uri, okay, May uh, sends a message to the science guy, Bill. And um, she's like, oh, come over here. And, and he's like, okay. And then they show up at the fucking vending machines. Gotcha machines. Gotcha machines. Thank you. And then he goes to this whole fucking monologue at how the fucking wood is so bad and all this stuff. And then he's like, oh, I saw you. And then he puts the coin inside the, the gotcha machine, gets a fucking re- super well toy. I'm just like, why would you monologue this whole fucking thing to, just to like get what she wanted? Or world building. Yeah, that this guy doesn't know what he wants at all. Oh, yeah, I, mean, I think that's pretty obvious that this guy's a fucking shit show. Oh, my mm-hmm. gosh, this guy's so bad. No, I think he's got it together. What are you talking about? <laughs> and <laughs> and I thought for I thought for sure he was going to take the fucking toy and smash it to the ground. Because I thought this guy was going to be I think he was that, going to. I thought so, too. I was like, this guy's going to smash the toy in the ground to spite this woman. For one, I don't think he was going to smash that toy. I kind of don't think he knew where he was going he just wants to be smart and like show how cool and intelligent he is so he went on this whole monologue and i don't think he had a plan after that and that's why he was just like yeah fine whatever you can have it fuck it oh <laughs> my god that this man doesn't have it's for sure a fucking plan yeah also <laughs> I, I just realized just now like isn't the, the scene framed by him going like oh you don't have the money i, I can't keep like be giving you money all the time or whatever and then Every other point from here on out, it's him wasting her money and being poor. Ah, no, I don't know if it was like a waste. He just, I think he mentioned like, hey, uh, just because we're childhood friends doesn't mean I want to give you money. Oh, right. But then he takes her money all the time. Yes. Yeah, because this guy's an asshole. And yes, he's very much an asshole. Dude, this guy's fucking crazy and out of his fucking mind. The uh-huh. fact that he- yeah, but his banter's good. The, the fact that he has. Well, OK, let's see. Here. Red tail chick, swine boy. Um, childhood best friend, um, bike chick, and um, phone chick. That's five. And this is a visual novel, so all five chick wants to fuck this guy. 
And I'm supposed to root for this Kelto? No way! I don't know if you're supposed to. So far, the anime has not said you're supposed to root for this guy. Second, I don't think these other four characters are quite all there either. Oh, no. The, the, these characters have very interesting personalities. The only sane one I'm going to say is, um, what's it called? The other science lady. Uh, Makisei. Yeah. She, she, I think she's got her own stuff going on. I, I think she'll probably end up being the most grounded character, either her or um, Moeka, who we meet in the next episode. I think one of them is going to end up being the most grounded, but they're definitely going to be like popping off mentally and emotionally by the end of the series, guaranteed. Yeah. Professor In in the Time Machine School. Oh, uh, sure. But we don't forget, we see the thing on the roof and we see someone like making hand gestures on the roof. Like, just real quickly. And then we go back to uh, the gotcha machine. And we get our metal Upa. And then um, we go back to the time machine conference where I said he gets into a fight. We're like, uh, you're just stealing this from John Titor. He's the OG. Except he's a fraud. Uh, would you explain this to me, Owens, about this guy? He's basically someone who pretended to be from the future. Okay. The doctor? No, John Titor. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then we meet Makisei. And she's asking Okabe questions, and he's freaking out, like, you're an agent from the organization, I need to call my people and tell them that an agent from the organization found me. <laughs> and she takes his phone, and is like, your phone's off, Brad. Like, what are you doing? That's because if anyone else grabs it, it instantly turns off. Yeah, you got us on that one. I got a question. Do you guys think this guy's actually talking to somebody? No. Not right now. I think there might be a thing where he is talking to somebody. I think this guy is actual legit. So let's go ahead and talk about that real quick okay so i i should have brought it up earlier but you said that these five girls are gonna have to love him or fall in love with him but does it have to follow the visual novel rules i mean it probably does um i i don't know how stein's gate works if it does have like a quote-unquote true canon route and if it does then this is probably what the anime follows um but otherwise it just follow it's going to be following one route um, which it's possible, um, that there's only romance with one of the characters and it's not all of them just pining after him and then he picks. That'd be great. Which I, even if that's what it is, that is, I can almost guarantee like not the focal point of this show. Gotcha. Cause I, I just wasn't getting a whole lot of like, this dude doesn't seem like this dude seems asexual as fuck. Yeah. Um, I, I, I wouldn't I, say so. I don't know much about Steins Gate again. He has not given off any vibes whatsoever about being interested in anything other than being a mad scientist. Uh, when he was touching uh, Chris, he had something. We'll talk about that in a sec. T he has that Titus level laugh at the end there. <laughs> also, yeah, dude, like this dude is a giant fucking dork. Like if we didn't have the context of like, we know this is a, a time show. Like, these guys are basically just LARPing secret agents, right? That's a good word, yeah. Well, he is. I don't know, because... Oh, his the, buddy is, too. I think that... that Mayuri still might think that's all they're doing. I don't know. The hacker keeps calling him out on his bullshit. He does, but he's also kind of going along with a lot of it. Oh, man. I, I'm going to say right now, I think the hacker is the only smart guy in the group, so... Dude, you're open up that worms now? That, dude, no, I disagree completely. I think, like, because every time he brings something up, he goes, there you go, being stupid again, and stuff like fail and all that stuff, and he only he only gets really involved when it's actual thing, like when they're actually, like, <sighs> jumping ahead, but when they're actually hacking CERNs is when he got real into it. Other than that, he's just like, ah, oh, whatever, I'm just going on the internet, you shut up. Whatever yeah, okay, wrong. sure. I really don't think he's LARPing with them. Um, yeah, I, I see. I, I think he is to an extent, but... He, I think he rec he sees it as like a game almost, where Okabe is like completely committed. He thinks all this is real. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's weird. Obviously, there's stuff we, <laughs> plenty of stuff we don't know yet. Sure. Um, but then we find the body, right? Uh, no, because well, Makase says like, "Hey, you tried to tell me something 15 minutes ago." He's like, "I don't know what you're talking about." Um, and we get away from them. Uh, he gets a static phone transmission. And then goes and finds uh, Mayuri, who has lost her metal upa. Um, and they're talking about that. And then we hear a man scream. Um, Okabe runs off and finds Makise dead. It's a murder through time. 
<laughs> it's a time mortal. <laughs> and this is what I wrote in my note specific. I bet, bet monkey's already done. No, I, I was I was I was interested yet. at this point. Okay. Okay. We send a text to Daru. Stuff gets warpy and everyone is gone. And we are now inside the building. Uh there's a satellite on the building and hacking to the gates by Kaneko Ito. What do you guys think? About the oh, that's opening? Right. That's the opening the intro. I did not like it. I did not like it the first episode. Now, when we hit second episode, we can discuss it more. No, we're going to discuss it once. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to say, the first time I heard it, I just thought it was really boring. And then the second time I heard it, like, on the second opening, I was like, did they change the music or something? I don't know if they did or not, but it sounded better the second time I listened to it. I don't know if it just grew on me at the second episode, but I'm going to say, it's good. But I've seen countdowns where they said this is one of the best ones. It's it's okay. I love the very beginning of it, and then I love I think about where the chorus should be. I'm assuming that's what that is when it, like the beat starts changing a little bit. And uh, but like uh, I, I I I don't think it touches Tank, Cruel Angel, or History Maker. But I don't think it's bad. Ooh. Oh my gosh! With the tank, I have to listen to it more. I think it might be History Makers for me. I think this song rules, man. What? what? Uh, dude, there's no way, dude. What? Uh, maybe, maybe the song, but with the animation of History Maker. Uh, I kind of like the animation, too. I think it's really cool and, like, really evocative. I'm into the whole vibe this show is putting down. I think the opening nails it. No, dude, History ne- Maker nails it with all those fucking colors, with the no, people in those fucking black pants and white shorts. Dude, History Maker is so good. It is. It's amazing. It's good, but I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying for my money, I think by the end of the series, this intro rules, man. Huh? I think it's almost certainly going to beat History Makers for me. Hot take episode one. Uh, that intro rules. We're all in agreement on that. Uh, Orange, um, you're dead wrong. <laughs> we can go on after that. <laughs> and then we cut to Okabe yelling at us. Basically, his whole thing is, I want to make inventions that are going to create chaos and (laughs) ruin the established order. The fact that this guy wants to be... Because basically the introduction is him just fucking talk about what he's doing. And he calls himself... He calls himself 001, right? Like... Yeah, he he's lab oh, he's, he's lab, lab member zero zero one. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm making so it's not zero 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 zero. No, just just double oh one. So he's double oh one. And he's like, I consider myself as a mad scientist. I'm like, fuck this guy. Although I'm saying this introduction is really great because it does show us how his personality is. Even though this his personality does not carry out throughout any of the episodes afterwards but it does show us that he has a fun side oh i don't think he's being fun here he's being 100 percent serious i don't think there's i don't think this guy has any sense of irony no okay then i don't like this guy even more um but yeah we get zero zero one which is him and then we get zero zero two which is his childhood friend um may and she's a cosplay um mako like that's whole like official title or something like that well that's what she does is what that's her hobby yeah, she's yeah. like she just sits there and like knits stuff. I don't know. <laughs> that kid was, I, I thought it was cool. And then um and then we get uh zero I mean double oh three, which is um Hitaru Hashida, who I forgot to introduce in our voice actor segment. But he's a quick one, so I'm gonna bang it out. Uh he is voiced by Tomokazu Seki, who does Toji from Evangelion, Rob Lucci from One Piece, Brandon Heat from Gungrave, and my fucking man Kanji Tatsumi from Persona <laughs> 4. Uh, and the English is Tyson Reinhardt, who has no ro- roles that I recognize. That's all. It, that's it for him. So that's he banged real quick. Skip it. We're giving respect to <laughs> fucking Kanji. So he then he he basically goes through this whole thing of like, hey man, do you think we'd be able to tell if you're like in a simulation or whatever, or in a video game or whatever? And Okabe's like, just like, nope. He's like, what? What do you mean? No, you can't just do that. <laughs> Uh, he's like, yeah, because it's just pointless or something like that. Yeah, because they're like, of course not. Who fucking cares anyway? What? Also, if you're going to discuss it, there's like, there's no end to that. There's no end to that discussion. Yeah. Well, I have a feeling that this conversation may be explored later in the series. Um, that's always, uh, that's a fun thing for me with like 
shows like this. I, I'm always worried about going in knowing too much, but I feel like I know just the right amount about this and just the right amount about like time stories and sci-fi stories. It's fun to like look at all the little details and be like, is this going to be important later? Like, is that metal Upa going to come back somehow? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the Meta Upa to come back. Like I thought for sure he would go back in and get the Meta Upa. Oh, it doesn't come back now. It comes back in 20 episodes. Ugh. That's how sci-fi works. Random question. You think the Meta Upa is going to be inside its gotcha machine, or you think it's going to be inside the building they find it? I don't. Yeah, oh, I don't know. I think I, you. I, I, do I think know there's exactly gonna be what happens. Do it. I think they just, uh, I think she's like, I think she takes it or well, someone takes it from her. Okay. Oh, okay. But she said she lost. Oh, I see what you're saying. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. When they were in the building and all the time shit was happening, I think someone just took it. Hot take. Mm. Okay. Do it. I love it. Get just throw in hot takes. Y'all hot take, and I'll immediately stop talking. Some time shit they talk about, and then he yells out the choice of Stein's Gate, which means nothing <laughs> at the moment. I just I just want a description of what Stein's Gate is. Do we still? I don't. I don't think we still know after episode four. No, we don't know. No, we we have to wait until episode twenty for this. I, I for wanted us to, to get look this. it up to see if it's like based in something in the real it. world, but I didn't want to be spoiled, so I don't it, know. Does anybody know what Stein's is in German? I think it's Stein. I think it's possessive. Is this possessive? Okay, I could be wrong, but I feel like it's possessive. Wait, isn't Stein like a cup? It can be. Okay, so is it just a cupcake? Yeah, that's it. Okay, we. <laughs> We all voted, you guys. <laughs> okay, but if you think of time like a cup, well, not a cup, but but if you think about what's oh another God. type of cup that often has greater connotations, a chalice or a grail even. Okay, so what? And a grail is much really associated with God, so it's basically God's gate. Boom. Suck it, time, Stein's gate. Time We're done. Travel 101. Yeah, we go to Tenoji, the landlord, or Mr. Braun, to fix their TV. Oh, did you guys see the remote? Yeah, it was like a oh, yeah, little laser gun. <laughs> yeah. Pew, pew. Then we see her looking up, and we get a quick flash of a grave. And then we get to do our test phone microwave, or we get to test the phone microwave. <laughs> what, oh, God, what is, what do they keep saying? Temporary uh, name? <laughs> just name subject to change. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Do you guys think that's like... A subtitle, or do you guys think they actually saying that? I think they do saying, saying it, yeah. Because Daru at one, Dar- Daru, I think in the third episode goes, "Can we stop saying that? Yeah, it's it's like, really annoying." Oh, okay. <laughs> we turn our bananas into some gel nanas. <sighs> what? And uh, so this is one of those like little notes that are, like I loved uh, because of like, oh, this is going to be important later. It's uh, I think they throw throw like three lines of dialogue at once at you, and Mayuri says, "Froze my chicken nuggets once." Yes. It's like, oh man, the ten- the chicken tenders froze. What does that mean? We know what it means now, but probably. Yeah, yeah. and I want to mention, I think we learn right before this, uh, they've, the Daru and him have been together for about three and a half years. Yeah. They've known each other, and I think they've been hanging out for two years. Okay. Uh, I don't know if there's a distinction there, but. No, I, I don't either. That I did not have that, so that's, look, man, I, I feel like this is one of those shows that, Pay attention to any detail you want because you never know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking. We get the email or um, he Daru and Okabe talk about the email. He's like, oh, yeah, you sent me that email last week about. Um, oh, the text message. Makase getting stat. Well, it's all emails. Oh, yeah. But Not text phone. messages. Yeah, yeah. Please, Anthony, get your technology correct. Um, it's broken up into three parts about Makase getting stabbed. And I didn't go back and rewind. Um, but I think it said, like, it flashed real quick. I think it said that he stabbed her. Like, the message said, I think I stabbed Makase. Uh, I don't think so. I could be wrong. I didn't go back and check, but... I'm pretty sure that that's not the case. Or I think I might have stabbed so- or I think I might have killed someone, or I think I might have stabbed someone. I think it said something like that. I could be wrong. It flashed really quick. It's just, oh, it, well, it, the specific message may have said that, but he, every time it's verbally acknowledged to all to us it's always like the message that i said that she was stabbed right yeah yeah. because he said i think someone stabbed her yeah that i mean that's probably more likely it it just flashed too quickly and i tried to read everything at once oh my gosh i'm thinking about it you might be worried about that honestly hell yeah that'd be a twist let's go so i got a question about this then yeah since we're kind of there um do you guys you guys think that he believes that he remembers all this yes 
I think so. I don't think this guy don't think of himself as crazy. I think there's a brief moment in either episode one or two where he's like, huh, maybe it was a hallucination. But outside of that, I think we've, we're given no reason to believe that he doesn't believe it. Okay, so he, he believes everything that we've seen him, uh, every every scene that we've seen him in. He, be- yes. he remembers that. Yes, I think so. Whether or not that that's actually the present day him or not. Yeah, I, I think we... <laughs> We can talk about timelines, but I think well, we are following. A second I think we are following two. one Okabe. Yeah. Oh, so you think we're following the guy that we've been following all? Yes, I don't. Anime. Th- at least up to this point, I don't think we have switched Okabe's. I think what you said about him, that text message, if it's true that you've seen that, that he's the one who stabbed you, I think that might be a different Okabe. Yes, I, especially given like that. This is from a visual novel, which as we talked about, have multiple routes. Like, I, I think that kind of thing is totally possible. Okay. So that that's kind of leading me to my next question or perfectly. So do you think that the Okabe that, that, that murdered, or like if, if that there was an Okabe that actually murdered her, do you think that this Okabe remembers that? No. No. Okay. Outro music's pretty good. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Someone shows up first. Oh, wait. Oh, did did I skip that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay, yeah. The elevator opens and Makase is there. <laughs> yep. I thought this girl was dead. I thought she wasn't going to be there at all. Oh, 100%. That's the way yeah. I thought of it. Yeah. Wait, really? I didn't think for a second that she was dead. No, I, dude. I knew she was not dead. I kind of thought that she was going to be dead and then, like, this, there was going to be more time travel of us seeing her maybe to prevent the death. But as soon as you saw her in the elevator, I was like, oh, so that's a n- what? <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna say, what do you guys think of the very first episode? I liked it. I'm um, getting some massive Evangelion episode six vibes. I was like, I don't trust it, but I'm interested. Okay, I thought it was pretty good. I thought this was a interesting uh, anime first episode. Anthony, you just have to open yourself up to letting <laughs> let yourself be hurt over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> I can't trust anything. Plus, it's my pick, so I'm extra spent. I'm extra like God. If you pick another <sighs> trash fire, that will make me so happy. <laughs> oh God, <I'm>, uh, <laughs> it would make me so happy. I don't think this is as divisive as you. I think this is like almost universally beloved, though. So yeah, I think so too. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, it, like it was much. It had much more personality than I was expecting. I thought it was going to be really dry and heavy on exposition, but it was pretty quick for me to be like, I, I want to see more of these characters. I'm curious where this is going to go. Episode two, Time Travel Paranoia. We meet Suzuha Amane. Uh, she is voiced by Yukari Tamura, who is 1010 from Naruto and also a singer, apparently. And in the English, English, uh, I apologize if I get the name wrong, uh, Sheremy Lay, Lee, who is Lucy Hartfilia, uh, Sailor Venus from 2014 on, uh, Pixie Bob from My Hero Academia. Who's Pixie Bob? Pixie Bob is one of the pussycats. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pen Pen from the Netflix version of Evangelion. <laughs> yes, sir. Two fucking banger characters in a row with A2 from Nier Automata and Makoto Nijima from Persona 5. Uh, Aurelia from League of Legends and Rhea from uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Uh, Ruka Urashibara, voiced by Yu Kobayashi, who is Nisei Holystone in Bakano. Uh, Sasha Blouse again. Lucina from Fire Emblem and Vi from League of Legends. Um, and the English is Lindsay Seidel, who does Neji Rihado from My Hero Academia, and the TV version of Maya Fey for Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Oh, okay. Uh, then we have Ferris Nyanyan, who is voiced by Haruko Momoi, who does Marumi from... I don't know who that is. There's a character named Marumi in something. Um... <laughs> And she's also a singer. English is Jod Saxton, who is Jod Saxton, probably. Or maybe it's Jade. There's an accent on the A. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, who is Eve Genoard from Bacano? Carla from Fairy Tale. Nona from Death Parade. And Kendo from My Hero Academia. <laughs> and then our final character is Moeka Kiryu, 
who is voiced by Saori Goto, who had no roles that I recognized. In the English, she is Jessica Cavanaugh, who is Carla Yeager in uh, Attack on Titan, and Inko Midoriya from My Hero Academia. The only roles I wrote down for him is her as two moms. <laughs> <laughs> all right, episode two, let's go. There's a lot of characters in this show, and they're all important, apparently. <laughs> uh, elevator, right? Yeah, we come out of the elevator, and um, dude starts copping feels, because he's a creepo. My man, this yep. is in the subway. <laughs> Read the room. Let's chill with all that fucking grabbing. I was saying, yep, touching the goal. Yeah, and she's like, is she real? Okay, so we get this whole bit, right? Uh, of him just being a pervert? Yeah. Well, a suspected pervert? Well, I mean, honestly, I thought he was actually checking for wounds. I don't... He, he yeah, he was definitely like, what the hell is going on? I don't think he was trying yeah. to... Yeah. And then she says, at the end of this whole thing, are you gonna die? Does, does she really... Wait, what? I think Daru says, ah, Louise's famous phrase. And what? Yeah, what the fuck does any of that mean? You are, that is over my head. I, well, I wrote that down because that obviously has to mean something. Huh. Right? Who the hell's Louise? I think she more says it in the, in like the, t- like you trying to die, like, it, like an attitude sort of way more than like, oh, okay, hey, I do remember that. Die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that I don't know who Louise is. I, I wrote this down because I'm like, man, this is coming back up, I bet. <laughs> um, and then we get to her, her lecture of our time machines possible. <laughs> Welcome back to time machine school. She goes, time machines are nonsense. Okabe gets real upset. And he also gets shit on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it, I, it cuts back and forth from him, like, depressed out in the sweltering heat <laughs> to her just destroying him. And every time she said Hoween san, it was, like, dripping with so much yeah. venom and mockery. It was, uh, it perfect. was good. Because that's his fake this. name, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which, oh, we forgot to, uh, just, oh, man, when he said that, like, it was. Wasn't he on the TV when he said that that's his fake name? Probably. For the public? Dude, that was so stupid. He was like, my fake name is whatever, Ho-Wan, uh Halloween, something Halloween. Yeah, I, whatever. I don't remember his and, other like, name, but. and that's just to trick the public. And he's on the fucking television screen. Well, as we'll learn in, I think, episode four, he's not very good at being covert. No, but that was pretty funny. Yeah. Oh, also, I'm just saying, um, what's called? This is, this is when I wrote down this note. I do not like this character. Like I said, I, I think he's great. Because so far he sucks. If they try and turn him into like Gendo, where like we're supposed to think he's cool and good, then I have a problem. Oh my god! I don't think anybody's going to be a Gendo once. Okay. Well, y- I mean, you know what I mean. Have no yeah, redeemable qualities, but everyone mm-hmm. loves him. Oh, and then we finally get the. Do we get that phrase about the secret words now? His secret saying. Uh, not yet. Well, it's it's after the scene when they meet the uh, sword person, the shrine girl. Yeah. So. We get that scene. Uh, he gets a call on his cell phone, which I bet that whatever his theme, his ringtone is, I bet that's going to be something. <laughs> the, you never hear a cell phone theme in a song. I mean, Jesus Christ, a cell phone theme in an anime or video game without it somehow having relevance elsewhere in the world. Well, I, I think you're right in the fact that we're going to hear that some other time and know that that's his phone, but he may not be in the room or something or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or he's going to be on the screen and then we hear it from another like area. And he's like, that's my theme. And then like chases after it or something. Yeah. Or something like that. Uh, but then we get over to the shrine with Ruka practicing her sword, his sword. Sorry. Mayuri is there hanging out and Okabe wants him to perform an exorcism for some reason. In a weird way. <laughs> he was just like, they were just like, yeah, you're going to have to do an exorcism or something like they mentioned, like the dad can do exorcism. And then Okabe's just like, oh, yeah, my left hand. Help, help. <laughs> and then my like, that's the opposite hand for last day. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, well, it's happening. Help. <laughs> and then they go through this weird scene of Okabe describing Ruka and then intercutting it with, but he's a dude. Yeah. He says he's a guy like three times, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Well, I got one question for you guys. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. What? That's that's what she says when we meet Amon, right? Oh, where are you? Oh, do we meet her? We didn't meet her already, did we? Oh, I don't know. I, I, that's what my next note after. Oh the no, we, uh, we we get a quick shot of Mayuri again, and I can't believe you didn't mark it because that pocket watch is coming back, my man. 
Yeah, that, then we get Mr. Braun uh, interviewing Amane, which I friggin' love this interview. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, the, he's like, uh, like, he's like, what's your name, <laughs> right? She's like, mm-hmm. Amane, whatever. He's like, how old are you? She's like, 18. He's like, why do you want to work here? She's, and I love like, TVs I love or whatever. TVs. <laughs> and then this is what makes... This is what makes me kind of confused a little bit about our main character because he was so grounded when he said, is this a comedy routine? <laughs> yeah. You know, like It's kind of like that that makes me feel like he's not completely off the fucking rails, but he's close. Yeah. Well, I think the thing is everyone here is off the rails in their own way because <laughs> we know there's more I to every single on one of these characters. Yeah. And then he introduces himself as the Hoi- Hoian character. Halloween. Halloween, yeah. And then Bron's like, I'll double your rent. And he goes, I'm a Kabe. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> he even intro he's like, I'm ho, I'll double your rent. Yeah. He's like, oh, okay, man. That was good. There's a weird thing with corn. With what? With corn, because he's like, he was he comes back from shopping and she's like, Oh yeah, oh, like, what you got there? He's like, it's corn. You never seen corn before? No, he got the corn from um Luca. Oh, okay. But it was extra donations. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, before yeah, okay. Well, it's not before that. During that, <laughs> he also starts reciting Mambo Number no. Five with all the women mm. in his life. Oh God, yeah, I almost wrote that. But uh, something with an S, Claudia. And I know the last one was Simone because yeah, the way Simone. he went Simone, <laughs> the yeah. way he said it. I forgot the first name, but it starts with an S. I can't read my own handwriting, but Claudia Simone. And yeah, I was just I thinking know. like Mambo Number no. Fucking Five. <laughs> And then, then I wrote that. Who throws corn like that? Like, or why would you Hell throw yeah. corn in the first place? Because <laughs> she wanted some corn. <laughs> I, yeah, but like, just hand it to her. You ain't gonna like fucking launch down steps. He was already weirdo. up the stairs. He's not gonna walk back down or make her walk up. I would walk back down. Thank you. Gentleman. No, throw me the fucking corn. Or even better, just yeah, fucking dude. time travel it back down and give her corn <laughs> and then go back up. Well, then he's gotta go hook the corn up to his microwave. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. The phone microwave uh, name to be changed. Which I forgot to discuss. What do you guys think of the phone microwave? Sure. I yeah, I was just nodding. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was really dumb. I, I was thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? It doesn't sound like a bad idea setting the time on your phone. But then I realized, but you're already to the microwave. We can get that's not what they're in. trying to do. Yeah, it's not. It has nothing to do with food. They were trying. I, they're trying to make a time machine. No, they're not. It's a microwave. They don't. They're not trying to make a time machine. I don't think they're just trying to make a microwave because then why would they be microwaving bananas? Because they call it a weapon. So I don't think that it's just a phone microwave, but I think that at the beginning is what we're supposed to see is it's literally just a microwave activated by a phone. Oh, okay. That was never what I thought. Uh, and then I, but I thought that they were attempting to make something, but what they made was just literally a microwave phone. No, dude, because his first invention is a fucking remote, remote, a remote gun. That's what I'm saying. But I think he's trying to make something. I don't think he's trying to make a way to heat food. Yeah. I think he's trying to make something, but it just winds up that he's it's, trying to disrupt the rule of order. Yeah. And you don't do that by heating food pro- uh, Im- improperly. Uh, and we learn a little bit about John Titor, Titor, Titor. All right, boys, hold hands. CERN is creating a dystopia. <laughs> and I mean, honestly, I was ready for this to be like, oh, okay. So the whole thing is he's on this message board pretending to be like from the future. And he's talking about certain, uh, it's in like 20 years or 30 years or whatever is going to have complete control over time travel. 2034 or 2036. 2036. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we'll have complete control over time travel and be using it to basically create a dystopia where they rule everything. And he explains a little bit about how time travel is theoretically supposed to work in this show as we understand it. And it's pretty simple multiverse stuff. Actually, yeah, it's multiverse. Yeah, it's multiverse uh, light novel stuff. Yeah, it, it the saying it it basically follows like a not novel. You follow a path and then it happens, whatever. Or you know that it's there's not one contiguous timeline. Something happens and then it splits, and that's you know basically it. Yeah. Although the only thing I'm not clear on because I think of what he says at later is that when you time travel, if you're jumping lines or if you are moving along your own line. And then changing things on your line then causes them to basically merge with other lines. I do not I do not know anything about merging lines. The way it was presented to me was if you I mean, they don't show a diagram of you time traveling. They just show how time travel is actually supposed to work. They kinda do in the third episode. Do they? Okay. Well kind of. May, I like I said, I was checked out third and fourth episode. But the way I perceived it is so basically 
whenever you make a time jump, you go to that point, and that point is whenever you change it. So if you change it, it just goes to two, uh, two different pathways. Y- yeah, you might be right on that. Yeah, so to, to me, the way it is, uh, you go to the pathway, you go kill Hitler, then you get the you get the time when you killed Hitler, and then there's the time when you didn't kill Hitler, which would be like a regular time. Even though, I, from their understanding, I mean, I guess it's just multiple dimension stuff, so it's yeah. like that. Any questions, Anthony? Any thoughts about time travel? No, as we I understand just, I just in the will, show. Yeah, I got it. Okay. World lines, parallel lines, creates multi universe. I watch community too. Yeah, great. Exactly. Remedial chaos theory. We all understand. Um uh, Uka Bay argues with uh John Titor online a little bit, like, you're full of shit, I know it, dude. Blah 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 blah. And oh no, his presence has been erased in this timeline. He, all his books are gone. Uh, Daru has no clue who he is. The Google search, the, sorry, the Google searches are not turning up anything. Yeah, man just disappears. Yeah. Oh, okay, so question on this John Tidal mm-hmm. thing. Did we have a conversation with John Tidal before the time jump happens? Or was this afterwards? Because do you remember him talking about John Trado and all this stuff? I think he stuff? gets name dropped. Yeah, yeah. He, it's at the very beginning where the guy's giving his presentation. Noka Bay's like, you're just ripping off this dude. Who has been proven to be a fraud, so... Yeah. And then we go out to the streets and briefly meet Moeka as she takes pictures of Okabe for proof that she is here or whatever of where she went. And also want now she wants the old PC. Dibs. The IBN 5100. Uh, she's a time traveler, obviously, right? Okay, that was my hot take. Sizzle, sizzle. She's That's lost not a time. hot take, dude. That's that why is I like a frozen take. <laughs> it's at least yeah, in the fridge. Dude, I'm just... <laughs> Let me sizzle, okay? Let me sizzle my heart out. She's a disordered time traveler. I love my notes are picture-taking girl, dibs. Okay, never mind. She's weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's my notes on every single character. Yeah. So, he, so she just like kind of blackmails him on trying to find information about this 5100. Mm-hmm. I don't even see how that's blackmail, though. I mean, not, explain it's that to not, me? but I mean, it's him. So it is like he doesn't want to be in the public. Yeah, I as guess. he's in public, which is a, a which makes so much sense <laughs> if you think about it with this guy. Yeah, sure. But yeah, that's the whole thing. She's just like, you're going to help me get this computer. And that's kind of her role for the next couple episodes. He ignores her. Uh, so next is Maid Cafe, right? Uh, Yep. We go to the Maid Cafe, Welcome the Maid masters. Cat Cafe. My Yuri is being a cat, and we meet Ferris Nyan Nyan. Random question. When we visit Japan, are we going to a maid cafe? To be determined. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying I don't want to. If I'm forced into a maid cafe, it's Anthony and Owens. I will go to a cat cafe. That sounds fun. It's not a brothel, dude. I've played enough Yakuza games. You sit there, and you buy expensive drinks, and then they pretend to be interested in you. Okay, so there is no pros- legal prostitution in Japan, so yeah, we'll probably go to a maid cafe. I guess Anthony decides us in the group. I guess we're going to a maid cafe, you know, mm. I don't know. I- I'll settle for a I really want to go cafe. to a cat cafe. Yeah. Yeah, Ferris Nyan Nyan, dude. She mastered her secret move, turns out. God, that was <laughs> so <laughs> what fucking What the fuck? Weird. I don't like this good at all. So, okay, so explain this Nyan Nyan to me. Nyan is a cat sound. Mm. So Japanese cats have their own language. <laughs> Yeah, dude, ja- uh, if you go to different places in the world, they have different words for the noises animals make. All right, here's why Ferris Nyan Nyan is all right. Despite the fact that I was like, I wrote her name down to do the voice actor stuff, and I was like, fuck, dude, <laughs> this is going to be torture because I know exactly what's coming. But <laughs> for one, I like how she was like so, she's just like so weird and like into this whole like, secret agent bullshit that they've got going on larping thing <laughs> yeah she's not even a lab member nope but uh, she's he, fucking they ready to You're go right, they won't let her because it's too dangerous i think you said something like that but also the way the way she's drawn specifically her eyes like there's like a weird like presence and sharpness to them when i say that obviously every character in this show has more than is more than meets the eye including her she's got i think she's gonna fucking hard turn at some point like i I think she is actually gonna be like very calculated because if she was just supposed to be hey look at me i'm ditzy cute cat maid she would be uh mayuri yeah she would look and talk and sound and act exactly like mayuri yep 
I also enjoyed the uh, the beginning line when they walked in. They're like, "Yeah, Darius in the back." Oh yeah, fucking Darius. <laughs> he's, he's already there. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's there. To, oh, he's there to see Ferristan. Mm. Or sorry, they call her Ferris. That's her cat name. Okay, so the question is: so we we really we we figured out every goal that this guy's supposed to hook up with. Who do you think is the best one out of everyone? I mean, dude. I think I'm a thousand percent sold on with Makise. Oh, that that Hoin San is gonna scene is gonna carry me through this whole series. That was so perfect. Interesting. You <laughs> choose the one that everybody already saying is the best girl. Okay. Uh, without knowing much about any of them, I'm gonna go ahead and say the blonde girl with the glasses, the picture taking girl. Oh, okay. I just want to get to this quote. God damn it. Do it. God. Oh, well, it was just that Daru had the best quote i think so far when he said she may be 3d but her soul is 2d yeah that was really good oh my god so good. Was, i'm pretty sure that's an insult yeah and i wrote that after i'm getting some major major chris vibes excuse me <laughs> <laughs> so we get a quick scene of others oh, in ibn 5100 somewhere in akihabara is that where they're um, at yeah, they're in Akihabara, okay. which is known as being like the technological hub of uh, Tokyo, basically. It's also the one of the largest shopping centers. Yes. Akihabara seems real fucking cool. Um, we get some more e- emails from Moika, which uh, Okabe ignores. And then we get the, <laughs> the World's in Danger omelets, which is pretty good. Um, hot take. Sizzle, sizzle. God damn it. It's a message. Wait, what's the hot take? It says end of the reward on them. Oh, it says the world's in danger. I think it's less of a hot take, more of a remember this. No, I'm just saying it's the sleeper agent, um, the cat lady. Whatever her name is. Oh, you think she's he's a double agent? You down. think she's going to betray them? I don't think she's going to betray them, but I think she's going to be one of the chess pieces, if you get sure. what I'm saying. Then we go back and do some banana testing again. Also, I wrote down, uh, just, just to go ahead and knock this out, I wrote down the code word thing here. Yeah. It's El Sai Congro. And do you guys think that means anything? Elsai Kongru. Do you guys think that means anything? Any hot takes on that right now? I I think it's just a code word that he's going to use. I don't know. I think there could be something behind it if we looked up like what the words mean in in each of it. Like, like what does Kongru mean? I don't know. Do you think Tutututuru uh, means anything? <laughs> <Do-do>. <laughs> There's got to be a reason she keeps doing it. I think it's going to be another one of the cell phone things where, like, we walk through, like, a. I'm just picturing, like, a haunted house and they're, like, walking through trying to find something. She's become, like, a crazy killer. Well, Instead of, like, that. a creepy whistling and nursery rhyme, she's just walking around going, do, 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 do. Yeah, so, like, I just really think that it's going to be, like, they're going to be like, did you hear that? And then around the corner, she's going to hear, do, do, do. And they're going to be like, it's me. <laughs> That'd be very good. The only reason I thought I started to think that, like, the El, El Sai Kongaroo actually means anything is because they start talking about in the next episode the Large Hadron Collider. LHC is very close to LPC. EPC. Sorry, whatever. Or I still think it could be LPC. But that makes me start to think it might be, like, something particle collider. And it, it's just, like, from all the time shit that's going on, he just has this this code in his brain for whatever reason. I don't know. But, yeah, we do the banana test. And one of the bananas is gone. What? Where did it Execute go? order 666. <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh, it went back to the other bananas, except it's a gel nana. Bum, bum, bum. And then Makase shows up. Well, and girl. that's the end of the episode. Do you guys think the banana went back in time? Yeah. Well, I think, well, honestly, if we want to, I think it's interesting that the banana not only went back in time, but it's also gelled too. Mm. So it's, I think it's showing you that then whatever happens in the time machine, you know, like whatever happens to you in the time machine, you will show up that way. Like you don't become, you don't go back in time and become an unfaltered banana. You are now a gel banana. Well, we did see Okabe theoretically time travel and he wasn't a jell bay No, it's, ugh, God damn it. Good, good joke. That wasn't a, Orange, I'm what's glad the you joke? Put They're called gel nanas. Why wouldn't he be called jell bay Obviously they figured out how to fucking do it. I'm trying to say is that. <laughs> It, it really doesn't matter because it's the same. We've already discussed it. I'm just trying to say that, like, you, when you time travel, you don't become the other person. You don't become yourself later. You just are now added. Oh, I yes, I see what you're saying. Gotcha. Right. Like, every all the experiences and stuff that have happened to you during the time travel are now with you. Doesn't John Titer explain, either in this episode or the next one, that if you when you time travel, it is possible to meet yourself? Uh, it's the next episode. But doesn't he say that? Uh, yeah. Something, yeah. yeah, he, yeah. What he said what it's happens. possible to meet yourself. He says it is possible to meet yourself. Yes. 
So if you just go back and inhabit that same you, then how would you meet yourself? That's what I'm saying is that that that's, doesn't happen. Oh, okay. So you think what John Titor is saying is just wrong? Mm, no, I'm saying that whatever, like, because the banana is back, right? And it's gelled. Uh-huh. I'm saying that, and that obviously happened in the microwave. Uh-huh. So I'm saying that whatever happens to you while you're time traveling, still, like, I, I don't think it's just going to be like a quick bloop and you're there. I think something's going to happen in the time travel part. Okay. And then when you come back, you are that whatever happened to you. I don't know if it's going to be like just literally a memory of you time traveling or whatever, but you get to retain all of that memories. You retain whatever happens to you. Gotcha. So basically you're not <clears throat> like if you visited yourself in the future, your second Chris would know everything kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's honestly, I'm just giving like a yes. It's a multiverse theory. <laughs> I'm double, mm -hmm. double, doubling down on that. I think with, that's what they did with this. Like I said, when I mentioned it, it really doesn't matter at all because they've already established this. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I think, I, I think you're right. I think there is something to the gel that makes it more than a simple multiverse because obviously something has happened to that banana. So, you, well, I've never microwaved a banana, but yeah, they they do say like it's tasteless and stuff. I know. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll see that pretty quickly here that basically the, the entire construction of it has more or less changed. Yeah, that's true. All right. Um, before we jump into episode three, I just want to say at this point, I had hoped uh, that every single episode ended with Makase showing up and that was the final shot. That went pretty good. <laughs> but episode three, Parallel Places Paranoia. Makase is in there trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. And Daru, again... This guy's got some good quotes, but what he doesn't, I hate him. He's, <laughs> he yells at Okabe not to be deceived by this 3D dimensional woman's wiles. <laughs> oh, I wrote that down. I fucking love that. That was hilarious. Um, we learned that she's been in America for a while. And then I forgot about this scene, but at the time I was like, so we get, we just got this shot of Amane in the shop flipping around on the TV. And that's like, she flips to, Makase sticking her finger in the gel nana. But like, what the hell was the point of that? Amane puts her hand in the banana? No, no, no. Amane, we just get a quick thing of Amane's in the TV or in the shop, flipping channels on the TV. And then it's like she just flips to the scene we're on, like as if you were like, you know, a clever way of doing a cut. But what is the point of even showing that? Because that's all that happens in that scene, right? Yeah. Um, uh, my, so it's the second time that we've seen a TV screen, right, thing? Uh-huh. Uh, they're uh, literally above a TV show or a TV shop. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just something that's going to be coming up. Sure. So Makase sticks a finger in the banana and, you know, is doing like some, hmm, interesting science stuff and tastes it. It's like, oh, it tastes like nothing. Daru is a fucking loser and needs to shut up now. Uh, then they have a whole, like, argument about which who's a pervert they're all perverts i guess she's the least amount of pervert i mean okabe i don't think he has any stakes in this argument other than being an asshole oh yeah never mind yeah you're right you're right i did i, I think you already probably touched this but i really enjoyed this <laughs> she's like i wanted to see if you were actually like curious about my death or if it was just sexual harassment <laughs> oh yeah that was good <laughs> and she's, and I think I don't think I wrote it, but later she's like, "Okay, I could I have enough to sue you, but I can forget it for now." And she's like, "No, yeah. <laughs> wait, hold on." And then he's like, "I thought it was just a little column made, a little column B, <laughs> but she's curious, right? Huh? She's kind of curious about these fucking weirdos." Yeah, because you know, I, again, as we'll learn, uh oh, there's something going on with her. She knows more than she's letting on. Uh, and she ends up joining the lab as member 004. Four? Five. Uh, under, under two conditions. Yes. I forgot the first one. I forgot both of them. <laughs> one of them, the second one, I think, was uh, he, she has to drop all the future lawsuits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think so. <laughs> now I forgot the first one was. But it was something just, just like, I think, dumb. Or maybe, actually, no, I think only the second one was dumb. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. But she joins... Um, there's a running gag where he calls her Christina a lot. And then Mayuri gets home and she's all excited because there's got to be a girl in the group. <laughs> That's great, actually. Yeah. I like my notes explanation for this scene. Was they do an experiment after calling everyone pervert for two minutes straight. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's apt. So they're just, all right, because there's some, yeah, there's like a, 
I think they, we've established that he received the text a week ago. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I, I, at one point, the text does disappear on his phone. Or the email, sorry. The email does disappear from uh, Okabe's phone. But, so, I guess they were, like, figuring out which phone to use. They put his on there. And then they send the email, turn on the microwave. Or, yeah, they turn on the microwave, send the email. And, and then, I guess, Bayushi decides it's done. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, because she she had some chicken nuggets. Oh, what's Japanese from? It's kagui. I don't know. I don't know she put in there. I, but, yeah, I don't know what she put in there. But, but. it's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fact, she just opens up the microwave. Like this whole science experiment is going off, and she's like, "Oh, I think it's done." And she just opens it up and almost electrocutes everybody inside the room. Yeah, yeah that's some a big old explosion. Big yeah, just to fill in a couple of details, they do establish that. um the message came in around noon, which was also around the time the satellite crashed, and uh, Daru says that there was lightning from the microwave at around that time, and he was like, oh, it was running diagnostics. It was probably in its reverse spin cycle or something. Yeah, because he was doing an analysis on it at yeah. that time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, then we get there. Everything blows the fuck up. But the message went to the past. They made a time machine. <laughs> and uh, what's her face is not having any of this. No. <laughs> she freaks out and leaves. Yep, and this is the last of my notes for episode three, you guys. <laughs> yeah, the, a lot of the rest of this is uh, exposition. Um, we get more messages from Moika, which he ignores. And he now we has dubbed her of... the Shining Finger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Shining Finger. <laughs> they talk about a bit a bit about the Large Hadron Collider, and CERN has it. It could be used, theoretically, to create black holes, but, oh, they're not doing that. Um, we get actually a pretty fun scene with Amane where she's like, you guys are investigating CERN, right? It's like, how'd you know that? Like, oh, I was just eavesdropping on you. <laughs> like, well, what the hell? But, but you guys are the future gadget lab, right? He's like, well, what? <laughs> and then we see a sign right behind him that yeah. says future gadget lab. He's so dumb. They're not really that quiet, are they? No. No. <laughs> we get a bit more about the IBM computer. Amane clearly gotcha, knows fam. something. I'm sorry? You want to knock out all this exposition on the 51 now? I feel like we got to talk about the IBM 5100, boys. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, okay, go on. Yeah, do it. Well, uh, actually, how far away are you from the John scene? Just go ahead. So the IBM 5100, uh, we kind of found out from a little bit later scene that John, T- what's his last name? Titor, Titor. Titor. Uh, but this is a different John, if you guys caught that. This is not the 2000 John Titor. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the 5100 reads a specific language that, I guess, John basic. really needs. Yeah, it's it's before basic coding. Oh, it was, no, th- this was made after basic, right? No, it was before. It was before okay. basic. And then they think that that's what they found when they were hacking into the... That's what their assumption is. So that that's mm-hmm. the language that they can use to decipher and find out CERN's evil plan, which, just to kind of recap everything, right... The IBM 5100 reads a specific language that John Titer, but not the 2000s John, can use to defeat CERN, which fits this disillusioned mad scientist's need for a corporation to fight against. So that's really convenient. <laughs> <laughs> With three lab members, the fucking, the pervy hacker, the like the ditzy girl, and the, just the, the in over her head girl, which I've, I've deemed as the red, the girl with red hair. So, yeah, we get what you said about the IBN. We get more timeline explanation, which we already talked about, the lines and the lines moving and all that shit. Um, That's where we also get the um, specifically you can meet your fr- yourself. Yeah. Random question. Um, so did we get that scene with uh, what's called the girl with the pigtails saying this he's a shoujo? Is that in this um, episode? Is no, that that's episode? the next episode. Next episode. Okay, yeah. go on. Amane Amane's is interesting so far. I can't wait to see what she does. But Yeah, me too. We get a a pretty good scene of Mayuri and Okabe eating on the roof and negotiating a food trade. Oh, yeah, because uh, Miru gave them all food. Like, she actually got them food. Mayuri? Yeah. Yeah, she, and they're just eating, like, noodle cups on the roof. And he's like, I'll trade you one of my things for one of your beef strips. She's <laughs> like, okay, but I want that instead. And he's like, but I like those. God, that she's was like, fine, I'll a, accept this I really did. I didn't like that scene. Oh really? I thought it was pointless. Yeah, kinda. And uh, and and I understand like you probably thought it was pointless in a good way. I thought it was pointless in a bad way. Sure. I just thought. I mean, look. I don't think this is a hot take. I think uh, 
bad stuff is going to happen to a lot of these characters by the end of the series. And for us to be invested in those, they have to establish personal relationships between them. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then the hacking gets complete. Uh, Daru pulls up some emails about the Large Hadron Collider. We learn about the Z program. And <laughs> uh, it talks about the mini Black Hole report. I think this is where High Paul comes into. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's like, Hi, Paul, like, we don't need your acting. <laughs> and that's when I kind of like, I was sold on their banter. It's fun. Yeah. But someone's died. Yeah, experiment. Human is dead. Mismatch. Duh, duh, episode over. Uh, are we good on episode three? Yes. Uh, almost. Uh, last thing, I don't know if we talked about it, but I do want to bring attention and make sure everyone knows that we didn't miss this part. They did. I believe it's established the girl, the red hair girl, uh, does not believe that people can create black holes. Yes, I believe that is accurate. Also, there's a public consensus, I guess, that black holes have not yet been created, which that makes yes. sense. Uh, because uh, CERN is saying that, you know, like, oh, we tried with the Lower Hadron Collider, but we can't. And then after he hacks it, they realize that they, they have already done it. Yes. Which is what John has said. So just to kind of wrap all that back in together, I want to make sure that that's established in episode three. Can't wait for CERN to have their fucking talking pillar council. <laughs> uh, you boys let me know when it's the next arc. <laughs> Episode four, Interpreter Rendezvous. Basically pick up right where we left off with Jellyman's report. Jellyman, hmm, interesting. Wonder if Jellyman is at all related to the gel nanas. Huh? No. Huh? No. Okay. I have no cross, idea. Cross that out. Well, I mean, not directly, but <laughs> cross come that on. Out. There's a whole thing with stuff. The bananas turned into gel. Now there's a guy named Jellyman. That's not unintentional. No, I, I think you're right. 100%. Because, yeah, because if things turn into gel... <laughs> Yeah. Um, Amane and Mayuri, we learn, share the same building because they're being friendly outside. And Okabe is like, what the hell? Why are you guys being cool with each other? Um, and mm -hmm. Amane gives uh, Mayuri a gold card. And they both say sup to each other. <laughs> or no, Amane says sup. <laughs> I think this is actually at the beginning. Amane yeah. says sup. Or, or in the Japanese, they go like, yahoo. And Akabe was like, don't say that. That's that. That's that way. And then she was like, sup. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and this is where Amane has her soldier scene. Yeah. Where she's like, I'm a soldier. And Okabe's like, yeah, you might level up into one. He's like, she's like, I'm a fucking soldier. You'll be able to change your class eventually. Yeah. And Bronze like, God damn it. <laughs> no, Mr. Bronze like weirdos. And I completely agree. All mm -hmm. these people are weird. <laughs> I think the specific quote was, why do I attract all the weirdos? Yeah. Uh, we also learned that Braun has a young daughter. Well, we assume young because Okabe refers to her as a the little squirrel. squirrel? Don't refer to my daughter as a squirrel. <laughs> yeah, but bet that comes back up. No. You know, someone doesn't just have a daughter without the intention of <laughs> them existing related to the story. <laughs> um, and then we have Mayuri looking up at the sky again, holding her hand out. And we learn why. Well, we don't learn why. Well, She's sorry. trying to touch the stars. Yeah. <laughs> Okabe calls it the Stardust Shake Hand. <laughs> and I believe, is this where the quote is where it's like, Daru is like the universe. He's constantly expanding. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know if that's here. Uh, is that here? Because she, I think she look, she's looking at like the, the washing machine at uh, Ferris's face. Uh, it's, it's in between the beginning and before they go recover the laundry. So, okay. Yeah. But it's somewhere in here. And Okabe's being a dick. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, look, maybe he shouldn't be expanding so much. <laughs> uh, I think I'm assuming we all inferred that her the start of shake hand uh, came about because someone died, presumably Probably. whoever's at that grave. Yeah. Okay. We learn. We talk a bit about the IBM 51 more, and then we run into Makase, and she lets up the slip. She says, oh, it, like, Okabe's going off about stuff, and she's ah, whatever, that's just a conspiracy theory. And then she's like, oh, fuck. And Okabe's like, well, hold on, what are you talking about? And she will not give him anything, so. And that's where she says, like, theories are nothing more than words. Uh, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I didn't have that quote, but she might have said it. No, he, he said it. I think that there was a funny statement. Like, I really enjoyed, like, how much secret organization garbage he's throwing in on all this. Hmm. 
because uh, when he first meets the girl right before, I think while they're like talking about everything, uh, the first thing he says, is, well, we must go recover the laundry. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I don't go recover laundry. <laughs> Why not? What? What do you do with <laughs> it? Uh, I fold it after it's been well, dried. Well, if it were at a laundromat and you had to go get it. I don't, man, I'm pretty sure his tone was like, recover like the stolen artifact. <laughs> yeah, he did say it like that. And uh, let's go. We realize that Chris has to do laundry. That's why we got we did get a scene of her looking at her laundry bag. Yeah, because then she's like, "Hold up, laundry, I'm in." Yeah, <laughs> and it does, oh yeah. And then he gets there and like, why hasn't it changed? <laughs> yeah, and she's like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> she's laundry, dude. <laughs> exactly. And then they talk a bit in the laundry, and she says she doesn't want to make the same mistake as her father, bum, bum, bum. and then tries to leave. Or no, he tries to leave. After he said that uh, number 004 is not going to be used anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because she's done. He's like, we we'll always use number. We'll save you 004. Yeah, we save you 004. And um, and he just like leaves. And then C grabs him. He's like, oh, I have to leave. Like, you're do- do- doing laundry. And he's like, I had such a proper send off. Like, you had a really cool send off and you yeah. ruined it. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, that was great. And as she tries to leave, he grabs her jacket. He's like, I'll just get you back. <laughs> exactly. <That's> so stupid. <laughs> this is good. This part's actually good. And actually, I, I think we skipped over the first time he did it. She was she even complained, like, man, you stretched it out so much. Yep. Yeah, obviously Mock to say no stuff that she's not letting on. I, I remember this because I, I kind of want to circle back at the end here. Ferris, we learn, has seen the computer, but before we can get information on that, we have to participate <laughs> in the Ferris Cup for Raynet Badler. And if you win, you get an omelet. She's really what good. What is it? Do you know what it is? It looks like some card game. Honestly, it looked kind of like it looked like there was a hacker and a defender, which is kind of like Netrunner, which is rad as hell. Yeah, I have no idea. But that was uh, I like that scene. Yeah. <laughs> and just the fucking crowd just chanting. <laughs> and Ferris says, like, basically he says, I'll tell you what you want to know if you play with me, Okabe. And then Okabe goes into, oh, did you guys catch the music in this background scene? It was good. It was so fucking good. It was straight ripping while he was like, I'm going to use the G-B-A-K or whatever, C-K. And they're like, the G-B-A-K. I call it G-Back. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, it was like, yeah, it was over in, like, two moves. <laughs> yeah. Which I, I, I should have looked up what, what uh, G-Bak means. Because, like, Mayuri kept saying it and, like, put it together. And I feel like the intention was for him to lose. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. He, he I mean, he plays it off that way, but also he looked real, like, put out at the beginning. So, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> and then we, we get the display of her glorious special move. <laughs> Question dodging. Or the ignore sho- ignoring shoulder. Oh, is that's that, what that is was? Is that the secret special move? Yeah. Are you sh- I thought it was just a move. No, I think that was a secret special move she alluded oh to in the God. last in the second episode. And she's yeah, because she's like, you saw right through. He's like, so that's what you learned. Huh? She's like, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ferris's dad had a computer, had the computer. Uh, and as he's walking around, Makase meets up with him, just like they run into each other on the street, and they go over to the shrine together, and she meets Ruka. No, the dad donated the computer to the shrine. Oh, yes. Sorry. Someone yep. donated the computer to him and said in 10 years, a young boy is going to be looking for it. Wait, hold up. What? No, wait, wait, wait. So they Ferris and Ruka are related? I don't know. Yeah, because Ferris's dad didn't donate it to the shrine. I Ferris's thought Ferris dad has one. Had one. Had one. Okay. And then what it, did they say what he did with it? He don- he donated to the sign. I don't think he donated it. I don't think we're supposed to know who dono- donated it. Oh, really? I think so, I thought yeah. he downloaded it. Okay. I think we all just got mixed up there. Yes, I think so. I wasn't talking about that part. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, no, so we forgot that the, it's basically we, it's over at Ruka's, right? Yeah. Yeah, so then they go, they see it, and he's like, that's it. And then like Ruka's dad is like, yeah, you can have it. And then he's like, someone told me like 10 years ago when they gave this to me, a young man's going to need it. Yes. 
And then he picks it up and they start fighting, <laughs> like walking back. And she's like, I can't walk backwards. He's like, you must do it, Christina. It's like, not Tina. Yeah. And that's when I think. Well, he, he, I, told, he told his assistants to do it. And she's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> um, before this episode wraps, um, there is right before they start doing that, like carrying banter. Um, Makase is looking at. Um. Okabe, and there's a quick flashback to when they were in the garage, and he's like staring off. And I don't know what it is implying, but clearly she noticed something there. And I just felt like that was an important point to bring up. Something about Okabe, or notice that Okabe noticed something, or I don't know. But it made a point okay. of cutting back to reshow the way he was looking from her perspective. Okay. Okay. So here's my question. Are, are we done with episode four? I'm done. Oh, we are done. Okay. So here's my question. Do you think, Moeka aside, all these characters exist congruently, or are they from separate time periods? And on top of that, do you think that any of these characters are related? Do I think they're all from the same time period? Do we think that these are the, let, let, let's say... For our purposes, in case, like, we do get into, like, multiverse and different versions of these characters, mm-hmm. do we think these are all the prime versions of these characters? I'm going to say to go with the brown hair and bicycle short, so she's super weird. Okay. The, the whole shoujo thing was really mm. interesting. Uh, what's the cat girl's name again? Not the, not Nyan Nyan, but the other, the, the Mayuri. Ma- Mayuri? Okay. Also, uh, a thing about her, I did not know it was her with the blonde hair. I thought it was just a different character. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That blonde hair really, like, took me for a loop. Um, I would say that if there is, it's only either going to be between, or it would only be Mayuri or Amane. Okay. Follow-up question A. Do you think these characters, if there are any characters that are, let, let's, for lack of a better term, say, uh, unstuck in time, do you think they have all their memories intact? Or do you think there's some time fuckery where they're not fully aware of what's happening? You mean as of right now? Yes. I don't think... Um, Moeka aside. Yeah, I know. I, I know what you mean. But uh, I'm going to say to go with the pigtails. The, it's the fact that we don't know much about it, but the whole social comment was really fucking weird. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to say everybody else, I, I'm going to say they haven't done this yet. Okay. Yeah, so so you think Amane knows like she's been through the ringer already, and yeah, she knows like she are she knows it all. She's just waiting for everyone else to catch up. Something like that. Okay. My answer would be if they have if they are time travelers, I think they have their memories intact. I do think I think the ones that we've met that like Mayuri and Amane, if either of those are time travelers, I think that they have their memories intact. I think that what's her face doesn't because she was one of the first with some shit going down. Before it's perfected, because okay. it's obvious we have to go from gel to actual time travel. So I think there's something there, like some shit's going to happen. And okay. that, like, you know, obviously, anytime you experiment with stuff like this, shit's going to go bad. And I think that that's one of them is some type of memory thing where you or I don't know, because she what the like the weird thing she said was like, I need to take a picture to remember where I am or something like that. As proof. Yeah, that I was here. Or something. So I think that has something to connect to, like being maybe one of the first I don't know. Time travelers. Um, okay. Do you think any of these characters are related th- through time travel? Like somehow Okabe is m- like Mayuri's dad or something. I think they might be related a little bit because they look similar. They like, I think they could be like both Zendos. I think um, one could be the guy and one is the go half. You get what I'm saying? Sure. I don't think so, but I mean, wait, no. Actually, I don't know. No, <laughs> no I, don't, I don't follow that. I mean, hey, you're welcome to your theories, Anthony. No. You don't think any of these characters are related? As far as like, uh, as far as what we've gotten so far, I don't think there's any Back to the Future nonsense going on yet. Okay. What about you? Um, I'm, no, I mean, I'm inclined to say yes, because that's how these stories always play out. But I'm, I'm not, not on like any evidence or whatever. Yeah. That answer will probably change as things develop. But final question. Do we all think Okabe is the one who dropped off the computer? No. No. Okay. I think it's John. Do you think we've met John? 
I think the dads met John. Ruko's dad met John. You mean, okay, well, okay. But you don't think we've met John? I think it's the go with the phone. I think C's the one who dropped off the computer. Hmm, okay. I think her mind is actually fucked. I think C is like, oh, fuck. No, she's related to somebody. Why? (laughs) Because she's from the... She's from the future, and she is someone's child. No way. Yep. Call it. No. Call it right now. No. Yep. Moika Kiryu. Yeah, because you can't have a different name, or you can't change your name. Whatever. I've actually no, got a she, logic she's... behind mine. <sighs> Fine. Let's hear your logic. So it's two thousand and nine, almost ten, right? I don't know what year this takes place in. So there was a there's a line that said John Titer has not or this was ten years ago back in because that's just, that's where I'm getting this from is they say John Titer was uh, he hasn't or ten years ago he showed up so that was two thousand is when okay, he showed okay, up okay so if it's two thousand ten and then he said ten years ago twenty six years well no and then he said that ten years ago someone dropped this off uh huh and it's the IBN that John needs. Okay, yeah, Future so, so I, I'm with you on there, but what I'm saying is, do you think we know who John Titer is? Oh, do you think we're no. ever going to meet him, or do you think he's just this disembodied figure? Uh, I don't know. I think it's probably someone obvious, or like, once we re- if we ever rewatch this, you're like, oh, there he is. I think, I don't know if we've met him yet. He could be something like the dad, or like Braun, Mr. Braun. I think, uh, I, mean, I, I think, I think Moika Kiryu is Mr. Braun's daughter. You think so? Oh, shit. Think about it. The timeline works out. She's a small child right now. Well, theoretically, a small child right now. And in 26 years, uh, the world will have been taken over by Stern, Cern, who has basically perfected time travel for their own uses. And she is a time traveler. Um, We got the reference to Bronn's daughter. she, She looks like an adult. She could be in her late 20s to early 30s. I think I think she's Bronze daughter. I'm gonna say I think you might be right about the daughter part, but it could be uh, Chris's and uh, Bill's daughter. That's also possible. But she has brown hair. Okay, random question: You guys think anybody's gonna die? Yes, multiple. I think times. people are going to die multiple times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you think anybody's gonna stay dead? Um. Ooh. In the timelines that matter, will I think at least one character that's more important than Daru? Will. Who that is, I don't know. It's Daru, you're right. <laughs> I said that's more important than Daru because predicting Daru dies, like who fucking cares? No, I mean wow. not not in not in the way that like wow, who cares dude. about him as a character, but he's the obvious. Are you talking about kill. the best character? He's just the okay. obvious kill. And he's not wrong. Because I went as soon as you said more important than Daru, I was like, it's Daru, you're right. <laughs> yeah, it's Daru. I'm gonna say I think it's a cat lady that's gonna die. Um, I don't disagree. I think everybody else is too important. Maybe the phone lady, but like, okay. Here, here's the real. Think- here's the real question: Do we think Okabe or uh, what, do we think Okabe or Chris is gonna die? I don't think any of them are gonna Neither. die. I think they're the main ship. Okay. Yeah, I I would I would like Chris to die. I think though. that ship's gonna float. I would really love I mean, that. Technically, if Chris she died. already died once. Mm. Anything else? Closing thoughts? I'm bored with this anime. Good. You got 22 more episodes. No, there's only 24. You got 20 more episodes. Yeah, I, I hope it gets better. I I think it will. Um, it's really it is really good. Uh, um, what's it called? Try and figure out what's gonna happen to, between all these people and stuff like that. I've heard it's a slow burn, but once it like goes, it fucking goes. Uh, Anthony, how are you liking it so far? Actually, I feel like my opinion is pretty clear at this point. Uh oh yeah, yeah I guess yeah I haven't established too much. Uh I am. <laughs> you you kind of hit on it earlier. As I <laughs> I'm very I don't want to be betrayed again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm very scared. I want to like it, but at the moment I'm kinda like I the banter's fun. Uh the science is manageable. They're doing fine with that. I feel like it's gonna be it, I feel like it's real hard to write like a time machine thing without going over the top. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I'm kind of giving I'm still being skeptic. I was like, I don't want them to like fucking lost us or anything like that. <laughs> Or it's just lost ended really well, but oh, oh yeah, but like just I only say that because I think I stopped after episode two. <laughs> it's just so <laughs> fucking out there, but yeah, I, I'm I'm still on the skeptical side, but we'll see. Okay, next time on my first anime, will Monkey ever appreciate my anime picks?
Anthony, why do we keep letting you pick animes? It keeps <laughs> not being good. <laughs> Will Anthony allow himself to be vulnerable again? I just don't want to get hurt. It happened in Game of Thrones. It happened in Evangelion. I just don't want to get hurt again. Will Chris learn Rynet Battler to impress Ferris Nanyan? <laughs> Nanyan. <laughs> Find out next time on my first anime. Thanks again for listening to My First Anime. If you enjoy the show, tell your friends and leave a review. It really helps. I'm Chris Bailey, and you can find me on Twitter at Chris R. Bailey or hear me play pretend on the actual play.network podcast. And finally, thanks to Slink for the use of 12 Speed as our intro and Winnie the Moog for the use of Speed Energy as our outro. You can come to my stream, ST Monkey at Twitch. Where the O is a zero in monkey, so make sure you guys remember that. I play single player games and multiplayer games, well, sometimes multiplayer games, Tuesdays and Fridays afternoons. You can also follow my Twitter at STMonkey, also O is a zero, and my Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is mostly containing dog photos of my dog. He's a poodle. And sit you. You can reach out and contact us on Twitter at MyFirstAnime or uh, email at MyFirstAnimePodcast at gmail.com. And if you feel so inclined, my personal Twitter and Instagram are both Sir Paperplate, where you will find only pictures of my cat. And once again, thanks for listening to My, my First, first anime. anime.